Good morning. This is Ian King Live, an hour of business and economic news from the heart of the city. And Sky, the parent company of Sky News, was named yesterday as the principal partner and media partner for the COP26 International Climate Change Summit taking place in Glasgow this November. Well, the news came as Sky, which has already set a target of ambition to being net zero carbon by 2030, and has new environmental commitments for its productions. Well, Sky's executive chairman, Jeremy Darrick, stepped down last week as chief executive after more than a decade in the job. And he joins me now. Jeremy Darrick, morning to you. Why was it so important for Sky to become partner to COP26? Uh, to COP26. Well, the annual UN uh, Climate Change Conference, which is COP, is particularly important this year, I think for a few reasons. First of all, because we, re we need to reignite progress around the globe and particularly coming out of uh, COVID and some light at the end of the tunnel uh, to build back economies sustainably and, uh, and in a way that's going to be protect the environment and value the environment. Of course, we've got a change in US administration. We know that's going to be a, an important part of their agenda. But also in the UK, uh, the government's been clear that it's going to be much, much more central to UK's economic policy. So this is a particularly important year. Uh, the COP26 summit will be here in the UK. And so we want to do our bit. We want to play a role uh, using our platform to explain that to all of our viewers and customers uh, and really draw attention to the importance of the moment, I think. Now, you've really driven the climate agenda during your time at the helm of Sky. Has that come at a cost to profitability? No, uh, uh, quite the opposite, actually. I think it's been something that we've been able to figure out in a way that's consistent with growing our profits over that, that whole period. And, and when you sort of think about that and distill it down, it is, I think, because at its essence, being sustainable and environmentally efficient and responsible is actually about consuming resources in a better, more efficient way. And so there's no reason that this can jar with growing profits. Actually, it can be something that can help drive profitabilities. We find better, more efficient ways of consuming uh, the planet's resources, which we get essentially for free. And what about the undertakings that were announced yesterday on productions? How measurable will progress be? Uh, very measurable. And this is really important, actually. You raise an important point. There's no good uh, us pursuing these things if we don't. Uh, we don't measure them. We measure them independently. We're properly audited. We can't audit. You know, we can't mark our own homework. So central to all of our plans has been that. How do we properly measure the progress we're making or where we're falling behind our own goals? And then how do we encourage the industry to introduce the sort of standards uh, that are going to make sure that everybody can move forward at the right pace? So underpinning the new production standards that we're all adhering to uh, is a set of principles called the Albert Principles. Uh, they've been uh, developed through BAFTA and they'll be a central part uh, to that. It's really very, very important that we... Um, that we, that, that we audit and we monitor robustly the progress we're making. Do you think it's time that businesses like Sky elsewhere in the industry had mandatory targets of this sort? I'm never personally a, hu a huge fan of forcing mandatory targets on the business because my experience is when you get into individual businesses, um, you know, everything gets very slightly different and businesses are at different stages of development and challenge, but we've got to make progress. Uh, we've got a, a, a target in the UK to be a, essentially a carbon-free uh, economy, a carbon-neutral economy by 2050. Uh, at Sky, we want to be net zero carbon by 2030, so fully 20 years ahead of that. So I think ultimately, if business can't get in front of this, and we know it's so important to, uh, to customers, to citizens of, 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 uh, of the UK, uh, you know, we're going to have to uh, increase the pressure, I think. But hopefully we're not there and the businesses can get at the forefront of this and can lead the way. Now, looking at the Sky business more broadly, obviously the company was taken over by Comcast just over two years ago. Has the takeover changed the way you've been managing the business particularly? One of the things I was struck right from the outset is just what, how much in common we have with, with Comcast. Essentially, both of the businesses wake up every morning to do the same, to do the same things. We're very, very customer focused. We're essentially facing the same challenges and opportunities uh, throughout the world. So, uh, I don't think it's changed enormously uh, what we what we've we've done. We found that the the, the environment we could plug into. Uh, is, is an environment we're familiar with and we like. And increasingly now what we're starting to do is we're starting to work on solutions and opportunities that will affect the total company. So I can think of some of the product development work we're doing, for example, uh, Sky's Now TV streaming platform was the backbone to Peacock, that's NBC Universal's uh, big OTT streaming launch in, in, in the US. And we're working across the broader 
uh, content group to create more global content. So um, it's, 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 I think, supercharged what we're doing rather than required us to change a huge amount of our basic operating practice. You mentioned Now TV just then. I mean, that's one of a number of products that Sky's launched during its time as chief executive. Others were Sky Plus, Sky HD, Sky Q. Was there any of these that were more significant than the others in terms of driving growth? I think the, the, the biggest, I think, was our move to a, a high-definition platform um, some time ago now. Um, for, for a few reasons, we really moved the whole industry, not just in the UK, uh, into Europe, into high definition. But importantly, we started to distribute content um, over our broadband network, as well as using uh, the satellite internally. That really marked the point where we stopped being uh, a linear broadcaster, really became a, a technology business, a multi-platform business. And much of what we've done since then has, has you know, connected to that to that, to that start of the journey. And the bit I liked about it at the time, of course, was that it was right at the heart of the financial crisis. Many people were then saying, well, how would Sky uh, survive in that world? And of course, we thrived by doing that, by embracing customer trends, uh, by pushing into those. Uh, we, con we, we went on a journey of growth uh, that has really continued to this day. So that's probably been the single most important thing of many that we've done. Just to pick up on something you said there, do you see Sky more now as a technology company rather than as a media and entertainment company? There are really three pillars that this business is, is, is built around today. Technology and products is definitely one big pillar. We, are a, 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 you know, we have a huge technology uh, workplace. We employ thousands of engineers now right across the business. Then a big content business. We're a much bigger owned content business. So things like Sky Studios, Sky Originals uh, are an ever-growing part of our business. And we're a scale content producer today, which... You know, 10 years ago we, was, was unthinkable, and, and, and that's a big area of growth. And then the final bit, bit of our business is about customer service. How can we be the best customer service provider and never lose sight that the people that judge the success of this business are, the people, are our customers, the people who pay us day in, day out? So today, if you looked at Sky, I think you would see those three things uh, going through the business like, a, like a, a thread through a stick of rock. They're the three things that we really build the business on. And what about the competitor landscape? Obviously, Netflix have been around for a while now, but Disney Plus has just launched. You've also got Virgin Media trying to buy O2, for example. There's a lot going on in the sector. Yeah, I mean, always has and always will, I suspect. It's a very, very vibrant sector. It's a sector, of course, characterised by really not very many barriers to entry pretty much today. If you want to get your content to somebody, it's, it's, it's easy and getting easier to do that. So it's a very vibrant, thriving sector. But big picture... When you stand back from that, uh, it's one of the reasons why the whole sector and the business continues to grow. There are just more services today that we can offer for customers. Uh, video is becoming a much more important part of people's lives day in, uh, day out. Uh, now, the other thing that's happening, I think, is it's becoming a bit more complicated if you're a customer. There are so many different choices. And, of course, that's, that's a key role that Sky can play. It can make it easy for you. Uh, it can aggregate, and we do aggregate all of these services. So the likes of Disney Plus or Netflix or Amazon Prime or Discovery or the BBC you know, are all available uh, on your Sky platform with just you know, one push of your remote control. Almost a, almost a button click of, uh, within a button click of desire, if you like. Uh, and and that's, that's, that's very powerful because it takes a complicated world for customers and says, we'll just, we'll, just, we'll just take care of it and we'll make it easy for you. Now, what about your position? You're executive chairman till the end of the year. You're remaining as an advisor. But uh, after that, are you looking for another executive role, perhaps? Uh, no, you know, I've got to figure out what I'm going to, what I'm going to do next. It's not, it's not my plan to do another uh, executive role. I want to take some time to have a, you know, an impact, hopefully, in a, in a slightly wider sense, uh, to work on some of the passions, to keep involved in you know, areas like the environment and, and, and other things. So, so I'm going to figure that out. That's one of the things I'm going to do uh, alongside, you know, betting in my, new, my successor, Dana Strong, who I think is going to be fantastic, uh, into the business, and then advising the company, you know, across, uh, across the globe, really, around what, what we do uh, and, uh, and, and, and elevating, if you like, my contribution to a different level. But that's we're just at the start of that journey. All right, Jeremy Darrow, really good to talk to you this morning. Thanks very much for joining me.